the team. There's a Bible in the back. Just uh, grab a Bible if you like in the back. Matthew chapter 13. It's a parable that uh, I believe all of us have heard before. But I'm going to start there. I thank God for your testimonies and your prayer and your support of the ministry. It's greatly appreciated. And it's such an awesome thing that we, uh, there's people from all over the world that are praying for us. And uh, those of you that are viewing all parts of the world and you're unable to visit here, I thank God for your prayer. I earnestly covet your prayer. And the ministry also earnestly covered your prayer. There's room on this side, Pastor. Let's read from verse 1, the book of Matthew chapter 13 from verse 1. I'm reading the King James Version. It says, The same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell on the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth and when the sun was up they were scorched and because they had no root they withered away and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprung up and choked them but other fell in good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Though who had ears to hear, let him hear. Who had ears to hear, let him hear. Who had ears, ears to hear, let him hear. Saints of God, we have five senses. We have uh, the sense of sight, we have the sense of uh, a smell, we have the sense of taste, we have the sense of hearing, and we have the sense of touch. And saints of God, many times we we allow things to come through the eye gate, or the air gate, or the mouth gate, the taste gate, or the feel gate into our lives that is not beneficial for us. And Jesus was giving a parable that the sow went and sow seeds. Uh, the seeds is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. The John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the sow went and he sow seeds, and he said some fell on the, the wayside. And, the, and that speaks, there were four different areas. Um, is that right? There's four different areas that the, the seeds fell. Some fell on the wayside, some fell on stony ground, some fell between thorns, and some fell on good soil. So there's four different areas that the word of God fell on. And the, the, the soil, the ground, represents the heart. So the heart must be prepared to receive the word of God. The Bible talks about in, in Numbers chapter 13 that the children of Israel, Moses, had appointed 12 spies to spy out the land, the promised land, the land of Canaan, the land that uh, God said to them that he's going to give them a land that is flowing with milk and honey. And God, Moses appointed 12 spies to go out and spy out the land. Uh, it's good to do some reconnaissance at, at times. Although God promised the children of Israel the land, Moses chose each spy from each tribe and he sent them out. Now understand, God promised them the land, 
And we would ask ourselves the question, well, why would God send out spies to spy on the land? You see, God was doing something with the children of Israel. He was, he was preparing them. God was preparing the children of Israel to walk by faith uh, and not by sight. God was preparing them to depend on Him, yes, uh, but also that they, must, uh, un that they must learn to fight. They must learn to walk, fight war. And we, as New Testament believers, we are not in a physical warfare, but we are in a spiritual warfare. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. The Bible says our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God in this pulling of our strongholds. So we have to be very aware that we don't find ourselves in a physical warfare. As believers, we are in a spiritual warfare. And we must take pattern how Jesus led his life. The example he left he, was, he came at a time when the political unrest in Rome was so intense that he could have got caught up with all that was happening. But he was focused on what he came to do. He came to born, to die, to be nailed, to, to die on the cross and to be placed in the tomb and to raise, be raised from the dead. He had a purpose and he kept his eyes on the purpose for which he came, from, came to do. And many a times, we as believers must keep our eyes on the purpose. If I ask a question and I says, who are you? You will say, well, you know, Pastor, I am a, a, a financial advisor or I am a, a lawyer or a doctor. Or, or you may say such as a nurse or whatever. You may say, well, that's, what I'm, that's not who you are. That's your job. That's what you're doing as a job. But that's not who you are. You're a child of God. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You've been predestined. God foreknew you. God knew who you were and who you will be. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1 that God said to Jeremiah, Before you were formed in your mother's belly, I knew you. I, I ordained you to be a prophet. And you say, well, Pastor, I'm not a prophet. That was Jeremiah. Who is me? No, the Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are made in the image and likeness of God. The, the first man, Adam, God, Adam means earthy. God, when God formed Adam out of the earth, out of the dust of the earth, God, he breathed his spirit into Adam, and Adam became a living soul. And out of Adam, he took a rib and formed the woman. So out of Adam had the potential to reproduce saints of God. Out of the man, he has the potential to reproduce. So God, at the beginning, God took the rib out of Adam and he produced a woman for Adam. And he put Adam to sleep because he didn't want Adam to have no say in the type and the fashion of the woman that he would give him. But when Adam woke up, he says, whoa, man. He called her woman because God would have done a great and an excellent job. Whoa, man. That's why as a man, you have to continue saying to your wife, whoa, man. <laughs> They've got, we all get the guys, they will understand them. Doesn't matter how we grow in age and so forth, uh, we still ought to see the, the woman that God has, and this is like Sunday Father's Amen, when we start to see it, we still ought to see the woman that God gave to us. As how God would want us to see her. her. And saints of God, God gave Adam the potential to reproduce. He, he gave Eve the potential to reproduce. So what, am I, what are you saying, Pastor? He gave us as believers, he gave us as man and woman, the potential to reproduce. He gave us a purpose, saints of God. The purpose is there for us and the potential is in us. When God made all the plants in the earth, and when he made creation and so forth, he, the Bible says in, in Genesis, and that the fruits, the trees, had the seed within itself. The fruit had the seed within itself. It means to say that within the seed, it had potential to reproduce. I have a bag of seeds here, corn seed. So within this bag of corn seed, well let me take one seed. 
within this bag of, 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 of this one seed, it has potential to reproduce. And if I, if you plant the seed and you would water the seed and you would take care of the seed, it will grow a corn tree, not a, a mango tree. It will grow a corn tree. That's why God gives specific warnings uh, not to, uh, to, to breed two animals uh, together. That, For example, like a horse and a donkey produce a mule. A mule. God, didn't, God said he didn't want those things to take place. Because the mule now can't reproduce itself. And within this seed, it, it has the potential to reproduce, to grow into a corn plant, and, and, and then within that corn plant, one plant, it may, have, it may produce two ears of corn or three ears of corn. So let's say it produced one ear of corn, and out of that one ear of corn, there might be so many seeds that would come from it, saints of God. So God was saying, Jesus was saying the parable, that I am sowing the word into your heart. I'm sowing the word into your heart. But it's up to you, you have the potential through the word that I'm sowing into your life, for, it, for you to guard it, for you to look after it, and for you to, for, for you to reproduce, and for you to bear fruit, and for your fruit to remain so the potential is inside of you to prosper the potential is inside of you to triumph through Christ Jesus but we are not our own we've been bought with a price in him we live and move and have our being we are crucified in Christ nevertheless we live yet not I but it's Christ that liveth in us so saints of God, but greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So what am I saying tonight? When the word is being seated in your heart, when the word is going forth into, and you're listening the word, you have to prepare your heart to receive the word. And when your heart, the, the fallow ground, the heart is prepared and you receive the word now, the good soil of your heart, you must guard the word of God. Because saints of God, the wayside speaks of, uh, you receive the word and you are joyous and uh, the, you, as soon as you leave, that word is stolen. The fowls of the air speaks of demonic spirits. So as soon as you receive the word of God, and I, I minister to you, I, 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 man, I sweat bullets and I preach to you. You come at the altar, I prophesy to you. And as soon as you step out, the fowls of the air begin to speak to your mind and tell you that I, that, oh, you, you ain't going to be that. You ain't going to own this. You are going to have that. Uh, God didn't call you to, 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 to prosper. God, you, you remember you and your family, uh, uh, you are poor pets. Remember you are living in poverty. You're going to come out of this. Your children are going to be saved. Your spouse is going to be saved. So therefore, the fowls of the air, the demonic spirit, knows exactly when to attack us because he is so understanding. We have to be not, we don't, we must not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. We understand the devil is a smart devil. But we now can, we must recognize his wiles and his tricks when it comes up and, and, and come against it. Saints of God, to understand, Lucifer, he was an anointed cherub. He was the man in charge of music. He was an anointed cherub. He was anointed. That's why not all anointing is real anointing. There's a lot of fake anointing out there. You had to jump and shout uh, anytime you see something. You, you, you say, well, that's not like the anointing. No, you have, must have the spirit of discernment. That's why the word of God says, know them which labor among you and that are over you in the Lord. That's why we must be planted, rooted, and grounded in the word and in the Lord, in the love of God. And saints of God, so it is your responsibility as a believer to guard the word that is being seated in your heart. It is your responsibility to make the heart ready for the word. And when you make the heart ready and you and the, the seed is sowed in your heart, 
saints of God and you guard the word and you watch the word and it seems as though that everything is against you or and against the word that God gave to you and it seems as though well pastor you don't prophesy no it is not just this prophetic word it's your, the promises of the word of God for you and for your life and for your family so when all hell seems against the word that God the promises that God has for you you go back to the word and you say no 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 I'm a child of God I'm the righteous of God he's my deliverer he's my healer he's a way maker he's a miracle worker nothing is too hard for him to do he make ways where there seem to be nowhere he's the God of impossibilities he opened the Red Sea he healed the blind man he raised the dead my God is able and he's more than able because he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I may ask or think according to his power that's working in me. So many a times we are challenged when the word is seated in us. That's why sometimes Sunday evening devils come up. Or Monday morning, oh you jolly, you so jolly Sunday evening, uh, you leave church, you leave the church, or you listen to the messages. Sunday, well, I've been diligently giving you the word Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. So you receive the word, and you and you and then suddenly Wednesday night, after the word is seated, or when Friday or Sunday morning, we some devils come up. Or the enemy send us, then you begin to worry about all that you have to do. All the bills that you had to pay, the bills that have been piling, piling up. And, the, and the, the, the worry now, it comes like this. Look what happens. The next side is the wayside. He sows seeds and some fell on the wayside and the falls of the air. So it means to say, saints of God, don't let the seed just fall anyhow the wayside. When the word is being seeded, receive it, believe it, and accept it. Because why? God's word is true. God's word is powerful, saints of God. There's nothing above the word of God. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of God, not one jot, not one till, not one phrase will pass away. The words of God spoke, every word will be fulfilled. Every word will come to pass because God spoke it. The Bible says the word of God will not return to him void, but it will accomplish what it says for to accomplish, saints of God. So you just, just not, don't put that word aside. No, you grab it. For example, the, the promises of God are for us. The promises of God are just, just for the, a few elite people. Or a few people that you might see sitting in the front and everybody has a jacket and a tie and a 12-piece suit. That, the promises of God, not because you might be sitting in the back, the promises of God is not for you. Well, not here, but this. <laughs> now we speak to the people and we make the people feel as though that it only if we dress a certain way, only if the ones that are in front and in a certain seat and a certain section and with the name on the section and with the amount that they give in, in a section, well, they will receive the promises of God. The devil is a liar. God, the word of God is for everyone that would receive it. Uh, the Bible says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Uh, the word of God says, uh, I wish above all things that you prosper. Not just a few, that you prosper. And thou mayest be in good health uh, as thy soul prosper. So why, oh, thank you. So why are we shortchanging our own self? Why are we putting ourselves in a category that okay, I am I'm not let's you you say, well, I'm not that educated, I can't accomplish these things. And you put up your own hindrance. Well, Pastor, I don't think I can have that amount of, of um, wages. I might be stuck in the eight dollars of well, eight dollars. I might be stuck in the $8 a day, or $60 a day or something. Back in the days, I worked for $40, $50 a day. Some people don't like to hear when I say those things, but it's a testimony. And we put ourselves in a bracket, in a category, 
and we don't see ourselves as how God sees us. And the Bible says now that some fell on stony places where they had not much earth and forbid the sprung up because they had no deep deepness of earth. Now saints of God, that's why oh, the guarding of the word is a continuous process. We must be constant, we must be vigilant. The Bible says, they that come to God must first believe in that he is, and that he is the reward of them that diligently seek him. Guarding the word that is being seeded, that is being planted in your life and in your heart for you and your family is a constant, diligent seeking of God and a constant looking after that seed and watering that seed and speaking over that seed and guarding the plant while it's, while it's growing. And you might need to spray it with a little insecticide and you might need to prune it and suffer while it's growing. Because why? The enemy is always trying to come and uh, sow tears between the world. Trying to sow tears so you now will be distracted and the saints of God, look what happened. It says there was no deepness of earth. It means to say that the seed was growing, it was growing well, but the earth, the heart, the condition of the heart became callous. The condition of the heart, this heart started to get harder. Because maybe there were some challenges and so forth in that believer's life. And they allowed the, the heart to become hard. They allowed all what that was happening in their lives to overcome the seed while the seed was growing. Now understand, the seed has potential. You have the potential within yourself. Because God gave you that potential. As I said, God breathed into Adam, Ruach, his spirit, his breath. And this breath that God breathed into Adam, the spirit is in us. And the Holy Ghost is with us and in us now. And it says, when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Now look what the sun, the sun is natural, right? The sun is there, it's natural. God made the sun. So what happens at times, we have to be aware as to how much sunlight we give the plant. The plants might be so young, that it, it, it can't take that sunlight because it needs to be looked after, it needs to be guarded, it needs to be covered by the sunlight. And thank you, Holy Spirit. David, uh, Joseph's dreams needed to be watched after. He started to speak his dreams towards his brothers and his brothers became jealous and angry of him because they didn't understand his dreams. And they, Joseph should have gotten to the place. That's why God had to allow Joseph to be removed from his family to deal with him. When God was speaking, God spoke to Abraham, to Abraham first of all before his name was changed. He said, come out from your father's country. Come out from your father's house. I want to speak to you. I want to take you into a place. I want to raise up a nation from you. But you need to come out of your own country. Come out of your father's house because in your own country might have too much of distractions. In your own house might have too much of distractions and I can't speak to you and I can't do what I want to do with you as I could. So God had to get Abraham alone. Abraham alone. Sometimes we need to take some alone time and let God speak to us. Speak to us. Not all the time you go to pray, you spend an hour in prayer. Sometimes you spend 10, 15 minutes, depends on how the Spirit leads you. And then you spend some time listening to God, listening to what He's saying. Because you can't go to pray and you need an answer from God and you continue praying for an hour and then you stop praying and you didn't hear what God has to say. Sometimes we need to stop praying and listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Because there's an air gate that we need to listen to. And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprung up and choked them. Look what happened, saints of God, the thorns, the light, the, the sunlight and the thorns can represent the cares of the world. The thorns can represent a demonic attack. And when we are on our break of our breakthrough and we're ready to receive our harvest and our miracle, the thorns come up. And thorns will hurt. And we can't deal with thorns with our bare hands.
Some people are taught you. You can't deal with heaven with your hands. You have to deal with them with prayer. Some situations, we can't deal with it with hands. It's tawny. It's going to hurt us. We need to deal with it in prayer. And many times as believers, we want to deal with stuff with the hands, with, the, with our, ourself. We want to deal with it. I will deal with this, Pastor. I will handle this. You don't worry. I'll take care of this. And no, sometimes some things, because it's tawny, uh, it needs to be dealt with prayer. It, and it's, we keep our hands off of it. I just fell under my spirit. Take it to God in prayer. Let God work on it. Let God fix it. And put ourselves out of it. And the Bible says, But others fell on good ground and brought forth fruit. Uh, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirty. So God was saying, Jesus was saying, you have such great potential when you receive the word of God in that heart that is prepared. It's a hard thing, saints of God. It's a hard thing. Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of, the, out of it flows the issues of life. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Guard the heart, saints of God. Don't just put any stuff into the heart. And as I said, there's, there's five senses. There's the sense of sight. Jesus said the eyes is the gateway to the soul. So when you begin to look at stuff, and that's where the lust of the eyes come in, we must be careful how we look. Well, Pastor, you want me to close my eye and I, and I see this, uh, this person in front of me and the look so that, yeah, you, uh, it, it's what, how you process that. Okay, you see it. Uh, you are blind, you see. <laughs> Fine piece of furniture, you see it. <laughs> but what do you do with it? You process, do you form a picture, a frame in it, and uh, you begin to see that? And this goes for either or, a man or woman, okay? I'm not just going for one. And now we, be, we, 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 be, we frame a picture of it and it's in the, in the mind's eye now. Because we begin to press, we didn't just look, we look and we begin to process it in our mind's eye and it becomes a picture, a frame. It, that's how we get the photograph from. And say, we, we take we, the picture in the mind's eye now remain there and we dwell on it uh, and ever so often because we dwell on it and we didn't just, uh, uh, we have to understand where to put what in the life. And, and many people doesn't understand where to put what and who to put where in our lives. Some people you'll deal with them arms length. Uh, so, so we have to know who to put where in our life. Well, Pastor, you know the butcher is so nice to me. When I go to get meat at the butcher, he, he smiles with me and he tells me I smell so nice, I look so nice. We even while he's chopping the meat, Pastor, the butcher look at me and say, oh, you look so nice. And you know you, 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 the, the butcher uh, lining you up uh, for, to, to, he's a serial killer and he want, <laughs> want to make you feel nice. So when he invites you over for the, for the party, you say, wow, I know the butcher a long time. He always tell me I look nice, I smell nice. So saints of God, what are we letting into the eye gate? What are we, the, the Psalm 24 says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up ye everlasting doors, and let the King of glory come in. Jesus said, upon this rock, the revelation of Jesus is the Christ, the Son of living God. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So we have to be aware of who or what we are letting into the eye gate, into the air gate. What is it we are listening to? Who we are listening to? What kind of soft music we are listening to? What kind of words we are listening to? What is the friend saying to me? What are we absorbing through the air gate? What are we absorbing through the taste gate, the mouth, the feel gate? You know some people have uh, um, fetishes. 
Uh, is, I, I need to make an ass thing. No, please don't get upset with me. I, I already sense that. I'm, I'm trying to make an, a point. Okay, this is uh, to make a message. Uh, some sometimes that God gives us a feeling, right? To, and some people take it on a different level. It is a normal, natural feeling to feel, to taste, to hear, or to see. But some people take it on a different level. And that's where it becomes demonic. That way it begins to break down our lives. What am I saying tonight, Pastor? What are you saying tonight? You have within you, that God has placed within you, the potential for great purpose. You have within you, but how do you see yourself? What do you think about yourself? Just like in, the, in, 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 in Numbers chapter 13, the Bible says when these 12 spies went to spy the land, only two came back with a good report. And do you know what, what the, the rest, the next 10 said? Joshua and Caleb came with a good report. And the, the, the 10 said, that we are like grasshoppers in the sight of the, the giants. And do you know that this, the giants did not speak to none of those spies? So what am I saying to us? The children of Israel were a delivered people. They were delivered out of bondage. They were delivered out of Egypt by God through Moses and Aaron. And God brought them out of Egypt. But they were not delivered in their mind. God may have delivered. The Bible says God has brought us out of darkness. We love him because he first loved us. He predestined us. He foreknew us. He brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And he set a feet upon a rock that is higher. Higher than the saints of God. He knew. He foreknew us. He predestined us. So because he foreknew us, he predestined us, and the spirit is in us, greater is he that's in us, and he that's in us, we have the potential to accomplish what God says we can accomplish. When God, understand, the children of Israel were delivered physically and spiritually from the bondage of Egypt. You have been delivered because the first day you said, Lord, I accept you, and Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my my life. Be Lord of my life. The Bible says, they will call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. They will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. The work is finished, saints of God. But you have to walk and work by faith. Faith without works is dead. The just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. And the children of Israel, the promise was promised to them that that land was theirs, that Canaan was theirs, the land that was born with milk and honey is theirs. What has God promised you? What has the Lord promised you? Say to God, it's yours. It is for you. Don't let nothing or no one hinder you. And your worst enemy can be yourself and your own thinking. The book of Romans chapter 12 says, in verse 1 and 2, he says that we have to be transformed by the renewing of their mind. The children of Israel, their mind was not transformed. Their mind was not transformed. They were transformed by the renewal of their mind. So saints of God, they still saw themselves as people were living in bondage. They still saw themselves as how the Egyptians said to them. What did the Egyptians said to them? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a giant slayer? Do you see yourself as a mountain moving believer? Do you see yourself having seed, having potential inside of you for purpose? You can fulfill the purpose that God has for you. And each one of us, each one of you, have a purpose in the eyes of God. And yes, you can fulfill it. But why are we thinking that we can't make this pastor? It's too hard for me. Yes, it's too hard for you. But Philippians 4 and verse 15 says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. What are we thinking on? Are we thinking on the naysayers, on the negative words? Are we allowing the circumstance or the trial or the issue to be, and we are magnifying it, that it becomes such a great mountain that we don't understand that we have, we can move that mountain because of the seed of faith, the measure of faith that's inside of us? The Spirit of God is in us. 
And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So you can look at that mountain, you can look at that giant, and you have the, the power to slay the giant because saints of God, the power is in you. The potential is in you to triumph. The potential is in you to win the victory through Christ Jesus. And you see that God gave you a vision to own a business so you can be, be, so you can bless the kingdom of God and you can bless your family and put your family in such a position that you leave an inheritance for your family and so forth. And, uh, and God gave you the vision and you drop the vision and you drop the dream. Why? Because you see as though that because of your thinking that it, you, it may not come to pass. Or it may be how you look or how you, uh, whatever it is. You may say, say to yourself, well, the system is against me. Hey, saints of God, God is with you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? So stop putting the blame on system and this thing and that thing. Saints of God, you are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but you are in a spiritual warfare, saints of God. So recognize what you are fighting against and take it to God in prayer and let your, you take on the whole armor of God, put on the whole armor of God. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And after you have yourself with the whole armor of God and you are fighting saints of God, you Take a battle stance and you're waging war against your own mind at times. Your own weakness at times, saints of God, might be the wrong thinking. But the Bible says, I pray you come home, stand. You might not be able to do anything else, but stand by faith. Stand by faith. But it's just to live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. The word of God says in 2 Timothy, for God has forgiven us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I want to fight. Praise God. Second Timothy, Timothy chapter one, verse seven, and I'll bring the message in with that. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. And of so mine. So the potential to reproduce, the potential to prosper, the potential to overcome, the potential to win the victory, the promise and the war has already been won. We are in a battle, but Jesus already disarmed the devil. Jesus already understand what the Bible says. The enemy is under the feet of Jesus. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and verse 6, He has raised us up with Him and seated us with Him in heavenly places with Christ, in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1 verse 22 and 23 says, And He put all things in subjection under His feet and gave Him as head over all things to the church, which is His body, the fullness of Him who fills all in all. So saints of God, because we are in Christ, and we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, it is within us to triumph. It is within us to overcome. It is within us, saints of God, to prosper and be in good health as our soul prosper. So what is holding you back? Is it your own natural thinking? It is your, it is your, it is, is it your own self that is holding you back? Because the mind haven't been transformed. And you see yourself as a grasshopper, insignificant. And you see all the sharks. You know there's a show called Shark Tank. Sometimes you all need to watch certain things like that Shark Tank. And you'll understand certain things. And we feel that we're in a Shark Tank. And we are, we are um, a food for the shark. No, 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 no. You are who God says you are. And it's, but, uh, saints of God, when David saw Goliath and heard what Goliath was saying to the armies of, of God, God was, it, it, Goliath was defying the armies of his God. And God, David says, no man, I will stand against uh, 
that uncircumcised Philistine. He can't be defined God like that. And David, understand, because David was anointed to be king, and David was in the backside of the wilderness, and he was looking after his father's sheep. And when the lion came, he killed the lion. When the bear came, he killed the lion. So you know what God was doing? God was preparing him to face the giants that he would be facing in his future life. And God has been preparing you to face some giants. And saints of God, you have, you are a giant slayer. Because why? The spirit of God is in you. And I said to you, what according to the word, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And but pastor, you know there's so much things against me. Uh, you know there's so much people against me. Ah, saints of God, they are with you more than them that are against you. Let your eyes be open uh, to know that the armies of God are fighting for you. Know that you are precious in the eyes of God. Know that the potential to prosper, the potential to triumph, the potential to be successful in the eyes of God is inside of you and let it come forth with your life placed in the hands of God. How that must be ready. David says, no, 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 no. I can't wear your armor, Saul. First, first Samuel chapter 7. I can't wear your armor. I can't use your method you used. That worked for you. Your armor will work for you. But that was, think, you, think about this. I'll give you this little nugget. If David had worn Saul's armor, and one and kill Goliath, the king always wears special armor and looked a special way when he goes to battle. The king Saul would have gotten the credit. Now David wasn't looking for credit, but they, the armor could, wasn't tried. David didn't, wasn't practicing to fight in that armor. What worked for this brother or sister may not work for you. You might need them to use a different scripture. And saints of God, David says, no, I'm going to the, I told to this child. I'm going, I'm, I know what I used, I used in the past. The word worked for me. I'm going to use the word. I'm not going to use nothing else. But I'm going to use the word. So David held us to what worked for him. And he was a man after God's own heart. So as I close this message tonight, what are you allowing to hold you back from accomplishing or being who God called you to be? But Pastor, you know I'm winding down in age now and I have to retire. In God's eyes, there is no retirement, saints of God. I don't plan to retire. I plan to take it easy in the future. But in God's ministry, in the word of God, there's no time for retirement. You preach the word until you die. You impart until time to depart. That's what I'll do by the grace of God. I'll impart until I depart. That's a message next time. So you don't say, well, I'll retire and, and you know, I'll, I don't have to do nothing in the ministry. No, no, no. You are constantly will be avail, as you avail yourself to God, God will constantly use you to do something. Even if you're say, well, Pastor, I'm good on an age, I can't fight like I used to fight before, like David. David got old. He came to a point when the last giant came against him. He couldn't fight the giant on his own. You know what he what happened? His servants came around him and they fought the giant for him. And they said, Oh king, you relax yourself. We'll fight the giant for you. So you might be, you might, as you grow old, you might not be able to fast and pray as you used to, but you can put position yourself uh, and do what God told you to do and say, Lord, have mercy on that child. Have mercy on that son. Have mercy on that daughter. So you ain't going to have no plans to retire from God and retire from the world. Because the potential is in you to reproduce. The potential is in you. See, saints of God, so I close, and I have so much I wanted to give you. The potential, you have such great potential as those seeds are being seeded in your heart. Some, some produced a hundredfold 
Some produced 60 fold, some produced 30 fold. Not everybody ain't gonna produce the same amount, okay? You, you find yourself in the position, find yourself in, the, in, 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 in God, live a life pleasing to God, and, and God will find you, God will mold you, God will bring you before great men. God will open the door for you. Don't despise your small beginnings. Don't despise your small beginnings. Because why? The seed that is sown in the right heart has potential to grow and to bear and to produce some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Everyone ain't going to be producing the same amount. But we are many members, but we are in one body. And we don't get jealous of the brother who produced sixtyfold. We don't get jealous of the sister who produced a hundredfold. Or we don't talk now on the brother who produced or sister who produced thirtyfold. God knows the potential that they have and how much they can handle. Strive to produce how much God has ordained you to produce because why you'll be effective and you'll be fruitful the Bible says the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he has been a source is wise saints of God you are a tree that can reproduce and produce and you have the potential inside of you for greatness saints of God but what are the excuses we make making well, Pastor, you know, everything is against me. You know, I'm not well educated. And what is the excuses that we are making? Pastor, you know, if I study this thing, well, let me say this to you. I'm not telling you to just do what you feel to do. Do what God says to do. Because we don't go by feeling. We do as believers, we go what God says to do. All right, I close it. And the hundredfold. That's, that was a heart, and that was a heart that was re prepared. And God had the potential in that person for those people's lives. And that heart was, the next heart was six, produced 64. That's why we are many members of one body. Every part of the body ain't gonna be a preacher, every part of the body ain't gonna be this. But find your place in the body. And do it to the best. What God has done to you, do that job the best. <clears throat> and then write your visions and make it plain. Do it tarry, did it read it, but run with it. Write your visions. Did the ministry didn't come into fruition uh, until I listened to the Holy Spirit uh, and wrote the vision and I began to write down how Lord, where Lord, what Lord, what to do with God and, and I write the vision and I made it plain and the Lord, Lord began to speak to me and said begin to speak to your vision, begin to see it uh, and, be, and, and I begin to see it with my mind's eye, I begin to see with the eyes of faith uh, because saints of God everything else was against the vision uh, in my natural thinking uh, but but saints of God, because God had the potential inside of me and he had the purpose to be fulfilled and he had you all in mind, he says, you know what, son? You just write the vision and make it plain and you hold on to it by faith and you, no matter what is against you, you begin to speak to it. You begin to water that seed. The Bible says, Paul planted, Apollos watered and God gave the increase. As the word is being planted in your heart, you guard that word. Allow the Spirit of God to water it and God will bring the increase because in his time, his time and his season he will break forth and he will make a way for you but there seem to be nowhere. Alright. Quit making excuses. Discipline yourself. I suppose to touch on Second Timothy. I have one more minute, I'll just give it, uh, you must start, go and meditate on the word and add, uh, study the word and so forth. When it says here in 2 Timothy chapter 1, a discipline, I wanted to talk on that, I didn't get time. A disciplined mind. The mind must be disciplined. Why are we, as I close this message, why are we as believers allowing, allow the people in the world to discipline themselves more than us. In this sense, 
There are many saved people that accomplish great things by discipline themselves. But there are unsaved people, for example, that discipline themselves as like, let's say, an athlete. An athlete would discipline himself, whether he goes for the Olympics, whatever, but he disciplines himself and he says, you know what? I have the potential inside of me to be great in this area of the sport. Let's, let's call a sport basketball or football or handball or soccer or, or, or cricket or something. So now the young man or the young ones, they, they, they understood that they had, had a gift. They, had that, they have that potential. So they begin to discipline themselves now. Now self-discipline is one of the greatest discipline. Soldiers in the army of the Lord, uh, and I don't have time to go into it, it's, uh, my time is up. Uh, but soldiers in the army of the Lord must discipline themselves in the things of God, uh, in reading their word, in spending time in prayer, in fasting and so forth. Uh, discipline themselves. Discipline yourself uh, when the Sunday morning come, uh, that oh, I'm not going to roll over and say, hey, sa, se, ra, se, ra. I'll, re I'll find it, I'll hear it some other day. No, well, that is now, but when time comes, we all of us are able to come to church. <laughs> we'll fix that, don't worry. And we lie, and we find, and I want you to study that, okay? Timothy said, God, Paul said to Timothy, a disciplined mind. So the mind must be disciplined. Do you think that anyone, let me start with God's men and women first. Let me, do, do you think any one of those servants of God they didn't have discipline in their life. Look, Paul. Paul was in a place. Let's, let, I'm only one man I'll talk about. Paul. Master. Paul had a zeal. He was disciplined in persecuting the Christians. And when, the, when God appeared to him in Acts chapter 9, and the light shone, and he fell on his face, and, uh, and, Paul, and Jesus said to him, Why are you persecuting me? And Paul had a conversion. Paul con was converted. His eyes were blind. Abba gosh, the prophet prayed for him. His fell, scale fell off his eyes. And he was baptized at the same time. God healed him and baptized him. Man. And saints of God, his life was transformed. And Paul began to discipline himself. All of Paul was buffeted uh, from a message of Satan. Paul was disciplined. He says, no man, I have to preach the gospel. I have to spread the word. Because I need some souls to be saved. Because God called me to save those souls. God had a purpose for Paul. And not Paul alone. But God has a purpose for all of you here tonight. All of you that are viewing, God has a purpose for you in your life. So, But you must discipline yourself. See, you must discipline yourself in the word of God. Not to use your sword. Not to use the sword of the spirit. Which is the word of God. When the word is being seeded, when the word is being sown in your heart, in your life, you discipline yourself to prepare the heart and receive the word and discipline yourself to guard the word and don't let the cares of the world, don't let those demonic spirits, don't let the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life come against the word that God and the promises that God promised you. God says, yes, you'll make it. God says, yes, you're an overcomer. God says, yes, I will heal you. God says, yes, I will deliver you because he's our God. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. He's a very present help in time of trouble. He's a shelter in this time of storm. He's a bridge of our troubled waters. He is a rock of our salvation. But discipline the mind. Those athletes in the world that, does not, that do not make it until they get to a place of discipline in themselves. Now, we have this Holy Ghost in us which can work through us in our weakness. And I'm learning some discipline through the help of my wife to, to eat right and to what is right. So I can live a long life to minister to you all. So let me pray with these folks and, uh, that are viewing and then I'll pray with you all here tonight that would like me to pray with you all. And as I close tonight, saints, I ask you all this question. Right here in the view over here. When the word is being going forth, the word is seated in your heart. How are we guarding the word? It's a hard thing. Condition of the heart. Guard the word. 
you have a, we have a responsibility to guard the word. And while we are guarding the word, the Holy Spirit will water it. The Holy Spirit, the joy of the Lord is just our strength. The Lord will bring it to pass. But we, because the just shall live by faith, and we walk by faith, by not by sight. The farmer, you plant, some, some, some believers plant stuff around their house. And they expect that plant to bear or to grow. And the word of God, which is quick and living and powerful and sharp into it, is being seated in your heart and in your life. And we forget what it's going to grow. We give it up times because of the flowers of the air, the cares of the world. And when everything else is against us. And that's the word of God. And we expect the pepper tree to grow and bear. And we expect the plants to grow. How much more would the word of God grow in our hearts, in our life? Bear fruit. Because the spirit is living is powerful. And Father, all those that are viewing tonight, as the word is going forth in their life, and not just tonight, God, as they set their heart to serve you, as they set their heart uh, to love you, as they prepare their hearts to receive you, Lord God, let your word bring forth fruit, God. And thank you, Holy Spirit. And I shared this with you all a few years ago, and, I'll, and it's, a, it's a revelation that the Holy Spirit gave me, and I'll share it openly now over the media. From, six, from, from 100 to 60 is 40. From 60 to 30 is 30. 30 speaks of spiritual maturity. In the Jewish, in Jewish beliefs, Jesus started his ministry at the age of 30. David sat on the throne as king at the age of 30. Joseph sat on, on the throne to lead um, Egypt at the age of 30. 30 speaks of spiritual maturity. So if you want, as a believer, 30 is yours when you become mature. But if you want to move from 30 to 60, you must become mature. You must leave drinking milk and start eating meat. Because you, you, we grow from faith to faith, from strength to strength, from glory to glory. So the potential is there to move from 30 to 60. And now the potential is in you to move from 60 to 100. I just had to share this. So now from 60 to 100 is 40. 40 in the Bible is a number of trial or testing ending in victory or defeat. The rain fell for 40 days and 40 nights. Moses fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. 40 is a number of trial or testing ending in victory or defeat. So you have the potential inside of you to move not just from 30 to 60 and settle on the 60, but you have the potential in you, Ayelabosha, to move from the 60 to the 100, a 100 fold, that you say, Pastor, I don't know how it happened. Yes, I know how it happened. It happened because God is on your side. It happened because the just shall live by faith. You are walking by faith and not by sight because God says you can do it. And if you believe the word of God uh, and you receive it uh, and you guard it, uh, you can move from the 30 to 60. You can move from the 60 to 100. Uh, and saints of God have declared tonight uh, that the weapons that have been formed against anyone, uh, anyone that are viewing and listening tonight, uh, have declared that the weapons that are formed against you and against the seed of the word of God, against the promises of God for you tonight, uh, I cancel it. Uh, I bind the wicked plot uh, that's against you. I expose every wolf and sheep clothing against your life. I expose the emotion, the plans of the enemy that's against you, and I render it powerless. I speak the word of God in your life tonight, and I declare that you'll prosper and be in health, as your soul prosper. I declare that you, you, within you, you have the potential to reproduce. Within you, you have the potential to prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare that you are the head and not the tail, that you are above and not beneath. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. And the Lord give you peace. I bless God for you all. I pray that God keep you and your family. 
I seal you with the seal of the Holy Spirit. I declare that you will prosper and be in good health as your soul prosper tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.